The Sons and Daughters Podcast. Discover and walk in the life that Jesus lives inside of you. Hosted by Andy and Tina Hayner, leaders of Full Speed Impact Ministry. Hi, welcome to the Sons and Daughters Podcast. I'm Tina Hayner, and this is my husband, my creative, energetic husband, Andy Hayner. Hey, brothers and sisters, it is so good to be with you uh, on the uh, Sons and Daughters Podcast, a sponsored by the Full Speed Impact Ministries, and Tina and I are leaders. And it's so good to be married to a uh, gorgeous, uh, <laughs> positive wife. Uh, is, uh, she's actually pretty creative <laughs> herself. Uh, but um, anyway... It's so good to be here. Um, you know, God has been doing some really good things. And, um, you know, last uh, one of the things that he has been doing actually is uh, with our ministry, we've been uh, really uh, developing uh, some strong relationships, some people that are uh, ready to be leaders in disciple making movements. Uh, we've been uh, make, making friends with people who uh, don't know the Lord or at various stages mm -hmm. various in knowing stages, the Lord. Yeah. Um, and uh, just, I think it's been great to have a community of believers that are um, all about reaching the lost, making yes. disciples for Jesus, building one mm -hmm. another up, yeah. up as well. <coughs> Excuse me, like-minded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know we've we've uh, we've not mentioned the hookah bar in a while, uh, but we have some good news from the hookah bar Bible study. Uh, if you can imagine that, we've taken the community of the King uh, into a bar. Uh, we've been doing a uh, discovery Bible study with a uh, with a, a few people. Uh, one in particular, last week said, "Hey, I want to be baptized." Yeah, um, praise God. Yeah, Amazing. and uh, yeah. yeah, the week before that was really encouraging. He started talking about all the things that Jesus was talking to him. You know, in general, he had been mentioning God, mm -hmm. uh, but specifically, he <clears> said, "You know." Uh, last week I started, I just asked Jesus, would you yeah. give me some guidance in finances? It was the area he had mm. some questions. And he said, right away, I had this very clear picture of what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so we encouraged him, you know, keep asking him other things, you know, yeah. uh, uh, help uh, and, and those kind of things. And this week he, he was just sharing all about that. And then he said, Guys, I want to be baptized. Oh, wow. So, yeah. yeah. That really sounds like exciting. something Jesus would say. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, to that end, one of the things that we have a vision to do is actually um, put tools in believers' hands that are going to help um, regular, obedient-hearted believers, but who may not have the, you know, the greatest ability to communicate, mm -hmm. may not be the mm -hmm. most organized, etc. If you put tools in people's hands that give them a track to run on, I've found uh, kind of like multi-level marketing. Honestly, mm -hmm. if if they're willing to to uh, introduce something into a relationship mm -hmm. um, with good tools and good coaching, you can actually help average people uh, ex uh, accomplish extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. And um, I consider myself to be a pretty average person, honestly, and I've just <laughs> been fairly diligent about uh, exposing myself to some to, exceptional mm -hmm. people yeah. uh, through reading and through study and through just, you know, uh, networking and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, some of you have read my books and used my books and things like that. And, and there's some tools that God has allowed me to develop that I'd really like to get into app form, uh, so mm -hmm. that people can have at, on their smartphones, uh, ways to share the vision of what, uh, disciple making is a disciple making movement, uh, contrasting that with, uh, modern church ministry, right. uh, have a track to run on for discovery Bible studies as well. Um, as have a track to, to like when you're mentoring somebody, what is it that you need to be helping them discover? Some what are some goals. key stri mm -hmm. scriptures associated mm -hmm. with that? Um, so that not, not only can you do it, but they've got a tool that they can use and sure. repeat the process yeah. uh, with their friends yeah. uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, and to that end, we have created these pretty cool T-shirts. Uh, if you're uh, looking online. On Facebook, uh, watching the video. They say, death before disobedience, hashtag mm -hmm. Maranatha. Maranatha means uh, 
two things. One, yeah. either the Lord the has come. Or come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus, mm-hmm. yes. And yeah. uh, this is a phrase that has, has actually come out of the fastest growing church in the world, the church in Iran. Mm-hmm. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the church is exploding there. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the phrases that they often will say to one another, kind of like we'll say, hey, goodbye. They'll say, Death, Death before disobedience. disobedience. They mm-hmm. remind one another that, that they're, they're all promised their next breath. And Amen. They're in a very hostile environment. Yep. So um, their their faith may cost them. Yes. But and, they're not willing to dishonor Jesus. And they've already caught a vision for the end. Mm-hmm. I will obey Jesus to the end. I will mm-hmm. uh, overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, the word of my testimony, and... Not, not loving, loving my, my life, life even death. unto mm-hmm. death. And that's how we gain the victory. And that's the mm-hmm. spirit we need to walk in. Um, and one of the ways that they're exploding is by uh, refusing to try to make organizations and, and build buildings with God's people. Sure. They are taking the kingdom of God and focusing on disciple making. Right. So, because that's what they can do there. I mean, yes. in the environment that they're in. Right. So it's, but I was telling somebody this morning. It's nice. They've they've actually said even if we could do more we, we would wouldn't. not sure uh, because this is working this is working <laughs> this, this is, is what we need to do we need yeah. to be a community of disciples making disciples right. and uh, keep it simple, simple. small connected mm-hmm. relationally uh, and they don't have clergymen they have leadership sure they yeah have, need some leaders but. Everybody is a minister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every believer is a disciple, and As every Jesus disciple intended. is a disciple maker. Right. right. Um, and so every every uh, every new creation is an ambassador, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter five. Check it out. You can't be. <laughs> you cannot be a new creation in Christ with also becoming an, an, an ambassador mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. or a minister of reconciliation. And that's God's vision for you, brothers and sisters. And so, yeah. hey, the reason I bring the T-shirts up is because uh, we're selling these T-shirts. So uh, there's fundraise. a there's mm-hmm. a in the proceeds of these T-shirts, uh, the fun the, the, the proceeds from the come. fundraiser mm-hmm. uh, is actually going to go towards developing a ministry app the for app. disciple making, mm-hmm. and we're really excited about that. And so, we encourage you uh, go over to fullspeedimpact.com uh, and right there on the front uh, page. You you will see uh, pictures of the T-shirts. You mm-hmm. can, uh, and then you got a link that you can go and order, order some of these. Order some for yourself. Order some for your, your friends, for your friends, for your enemies, for your family. <laughs> you can get early Christmas gifts. Uh, you can have mm-hmm. them shipped directly to you if you are in. Uh, the area where we live in Laverne, uh, Rutherford County uh, mm-hmm. area, uh, you can order those and just have them uh, in with the bulk shipment that's coming mm-hmm. here, and uh, we'll see that uh, you get it here locally as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but meanwhile, if you were with us last <laughs> back week, to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, if you were with us last week, uh, we had a really special guest, uh, mm-hmm. Tim Jorgensen. Uh, the author of Spirit Life Training, and uh, he covered with us some really foundational truth Mm -hmm. um, about sanctifying, aligning our memory Mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit, taking authority, taking control of our memory, instead of letting our memories kick us around, program us, and drawing our identity from that. We need to program our memory, right? Amen. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Through the Word of God, make and, it serve the yes, Lord. Yes, mm-hmm. bring it under subjection, uh, and we can do that. Uh, and there's times where we just have to choose to forget what lies behind. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then there's also we can choose by our will to remember the good things that the right. Lord has done. Mm-hmm. Um, this week, uh, we're going to uh, share the remainder of our time with right. Tim. But to be continued. Uh, yeah. Continues. And, <laughs> and, uh, and he is going to uh, be sharing with us about s- not uh, the memory, but our imagination and right. the importance of our imagination right. in the things of the Lord. All right. Memory reaching back in our soul and imagination reaching forward. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, um, yeah, it's exciting, just like just like bringing the memory under submission. Uh, we bring that imagination under submission. And some people are a little um, 
uh, nervous about it sometimes too. Don't want to misuse it or, you know, is that okay or whatever. And um, some people long time ago, like w- wouldn't want their kids to play imaginary games or, or have them uh, use their imagination and play. It's like, Oh, that could be of the devil. But, um, but no, <clears throat> then our imagination doesn't belong to the devil. No. It belongs to the Lord. And when we uh, train it uh, for him and allow the Holy spirit to combine with it, uh, to a mighty tool to um, help grow our faith. Uh, amazing. Hundred percent. Yeah. If uh, if an imagination was bad, God wouldn't have made us with an imagination. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, he made us in His image. God uh, was able to envision, imagine mm-hmm. the entire universe, mm-hmm. um, make image bearers. Right. Um, <laughs> and so it's really important that we understand that we not. Uh, you know, believe it or not, even if you think imagination is bad and you teach your children that imagination is bad, you're not going to have people that won't use their imagination. The no. problem is, is that they'll think that it's evil. They'll be trying to reject parts of themselves, themselves. that are mm-hmm. God actually intended for good. Mm-hmm. And there'll be a conflict within themselves and you're giving ground to the enemy. They can't stop using the imagination. their imagination. Sure. Uh, and so you're just basically handing that over to the enemy. But that's not mm-hmm. what we're going to do. Uh, because the Word of God shows us a different path. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, return to our uh, time with Tim and uh, bring him on, uh, kind of jumping in, talking about uh, the imagination and the Holy Spirit. Well, brother, why don't we turn the corner just a little bit to um, talk about the other aspect of the soul that you brought out uh that isn't typically covered. You know, we sit. We often see the the mind, the will, and the emotion. Uh, we talked about memory. Let's talk about the imagination. Uh, how? Where? Where does this come into play? How do you? Why is this important? Uh, mm-hmm. Help us get started with that. Yeah. Well, the, the imagination is such a huge topic, and it's <laughs> it's a uh, it is it's huge. It's it's a uh, it's uh the memory and the the imagination kind of work together the, yeah the memory is kind of like the um it's one of the it's one of the backbones for your faith mm-hmm. okay so god's faithfulness is based on the fact that he remembers his word and he can't forget it hmm. yeah that's that's basically how god is faithful he can't forget his word it's <laughs> mm. He just, he has a good memory and he will not forget his word. No mm. matter throughout all money, heaven earth passed away. My word will never pass away. He'll never forget it. Mm-hmm. Um, but your, uh, your uh, uh, faith is based on the fact that you remember and you demonstrate and uh, you declare to God that you remember uh, that that you remember his word that he can't forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the backbones of your faith. Now, Mm -hmm. however, uh, imagination is how you flesh out that it's, it's, it says, you know, this is the word, but how does that word that he's spoken that he can't forget? How does that morph into my present situation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of Christians are, so when it comes to the spiritual life, I think a lot of Christians associate trying to use your imagination with uh, with New Age or Eastern of type of things. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about the distinction between that and where there's honestly something maybe that we've left on the table so the enemy kind of took it up <laughs> and started running with it to scare us away from a, a powerful tool? Or how do you look at that? Yeah. It's well, the problem is that they they just don't understand all the things that God has done in the word of God to uh, to uh, um, demonstrate the imagination. So it's just there's so many things in the word of God that show that God has given you a picture. God is a God of pictures and and imagery. Mm -hmm. And he, he he's the one that really put into the 
the understanding that picture is worth a thousand words. He's the mm -hmm. one that that says that gave you the temple. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one that gave you all the different parts of the temple, the sacrificial system, um, all the different typologies that are in the Old Testament. Um, again, he used those as to and morph them into the concepts that are brought out in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So God is a God of pictures. He is the one that. Uh, in Jesus, when he came, he came teaching parables. Mm -hmm. So everywhere he went, he was giving imagery and, and to try to illustrate the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And by faith, we understand that the that uh, um, uh, that uh, the things are, that are made are made by things that are not seen, mm -hmm. um, but they're they're framed by the word of God. And so there's uh, in in the uh, uh, you see Jesus when he said. Um, uh, we talked about faith. He said that uh, when they, they saw the tree withered up from the roots and they said, well, how can this be? He's, he said, have faith in God. He says, uh, forever shall say this mountain be removed, be cast in the sea and do not doubt in their heart. And those things they say shall come to pass. You have whatever he says. So he's, he's giving them an image, uh, something where their imagination should expand to this point. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think the last time on our podcast, I actually referred to the, that, that story. Yeah. But, um, anyways, the Jesus came and he was full of imagery. And so why did he do that? He did that to get their, um, once their imagination should go to go in a certain way, he knew their eyes could start being open and they should, could start believing in a mm -hmm. new way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so their faith and their imagination were connected were together. Yeah. Right. Very much so. I was just thinking about how um, even in the epistle uh, with Ephesians 3, Paul says that he would do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ask or, or think or imagine, imagine really. Yeah. Or, you know, it can be translated imagine. So mm -hmm. even in our in our prayers, mm -hmm. um, there's some imagination going on mm -hmm. and, and that God actually is going to blow your mind, so to speak, or accept see that you look throughout the new testament jesus rewarded people who believed bigger mm -hmm. he, there's no place where he he says oh hold it back you know hold, <laughs> hold, hold your horses buddy yeah. um here you know I'm, I'm i'm good but not that good okay. <laughs> he never he never once gave an inclination mm -hmm. it, when people believe big he rewarded their he rewarded them for that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um the, That's the true. The, you talk about the centurion that uh, I, I usually use this as a understanding of for the intellect. Mm -hmm. um, but with the centurion, when he said that uh, um, he said, "My servant's sick, please come mm -hmm. uh, and heal heal my uh, servant," and uh, he actually says, and he says, "I'll come and heal him." And and the servant says, "No, no, all you do, need to do is speak the word, right. and my servant will be healed." And he says, for I also am a man under me who said, you know, come and comes, go when he goes and they do it. And, and so Jesus said, I've not found anyone with such faith, not even in Israel. So the thing was in terms of, again, there's a synergy here that his intellect of the centurion says, I can put two and two together. I can see the kind of authority you have and it works the same way as my authority. And so, but what he used there was an imagination, imagination. A picture. Mm -hmm. He says, I, let me give you a picture of what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is speak the word and it will happen. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he, so he expanded his imagination to the point where he did not need to see a physical hand being placed on mm -hmm. him. All he needed to hear was a word. He says, mm -hmm. that's enough. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know, the, the Syrophoenician woman. You know, when, when she was said, you know, you know, begged Jesus to heal her demon possessed mm -hmm. daughter mm -hmm. and, and said, send, send her away. And, and Jesus said, well, and he finally turned to her and said, it's not right to take the children's bread, Jesus. cast the little dogs. And she flipped it on him mm -hmm. again. She used the intellect. I use this for the intellect part of it, but she, she flipped on him and says, okay, you're going to give me that picture. I'll, I'll jump off that. It says, well, Okay. So even the little dogs, they eat, eat the, the crumbs that fall from the master's table. So yeah. if you're going to give me a picture, I'm going to work with that picture. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, why you're still so good enough, you can do this. Yeah. Right. So right. it's, it's that imagination. Jesus throw, 
God's throwing out breadcrumbs and says, uh, based on my nature, you can use these breadcrumbs to expand into what you need. Mm -hmm. And you see that throughout the, the, um, the New Testament, how Jesus interacted with people and how he worked with trying to give them a bigger picture of the goodness of God and the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say you, probably most Christians would recognize how often they've been helped um, in their faith by a really good sermon illustration that just, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, they'll, uh, they'll see an example that just fits so perfectly, like in a movie, mm -hmm. um, because we got, we need a picture. We need to, it's so much more powerful than simply the concepts, you know, where we can say, God loves you. Then we see a picture of it, right. uh, happen, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in our, and, and it's just got so much more powerful because we can, it seems like, you know, you know seeing it. Uh, and having that picture, it just enables us to so much more engage right. uh, with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me deal with something that you mentioned earlier is just about the, the difference between the, the, the new age visualization and right. the, the Christian imagination. So the, the new age visualization, they're not basing anything on the word of God. They, mm -hmm. they kind of just, just say your imagination is king. Not the word of God is, is the foundation. That is the guide. That is the building materials. Mm -hmm. um, they're just working with saying, I'm going to build my own materials. This is what I want. Basis. So this is what I'm right. going to visualize. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And again, there's, there's a power in that. There's a power in the imagination. But be careful that it doesn't become a vain imagination. Mm -hmm. And you end up start fighting mm -hmm. against God. Because there's, there's principles in the word of God that cannot be uh, you know, it can't be uh, crossed. And when you start using your imagination to start violating those things, mm -hmm. then you start going in the, in the wrong direction. So it, it, it kind of brings you to bondage instead of victory. Exactly. You know, it kind of reminds me, I mean, you can do some things to improve the way that you look in your physical appearance. Um, and, uh, and you can then use your body for immorality. Uh, correct mm -hmm. to attract someone to yourself so that you commit immorality. The same thing is with imagination. is It's a God given power um, that God has given us. Right. But he, but when but it uh, it's it's meant to be used mm -hmm. under the authority of His Word and to accomplish His Word. Right. And so I, mm -hmm. I really like the fact that you're drawing the distinction. Mm -hmm. It's not that we, and I think a lot of Christians have gone the other extreme. Is that because New Agers use, use their mm -hmm. uh, uh, imagination? Uh, therefore, any reference to using the imagination in a positive spiritual light is new age. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, God mm -hmm. gave us the imagination and he intends for us to use it uh, and to right. exploit the power that he's given us mm -hmm. to accomplish his work. Right. It doesn't have to belong to the devil. It can. It belongs to God. I was reminded, too, of um, your example in the book. You talk about the Tower of Babel. Um, and so it would be good for you to kind of, that would explain, I think what we're talking about here. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's true. It, it, it's, it's very clear that says Jesus said, uh, not Jesus, but God, God said, um, when that, uh, uh, when they started building and they said, and God himself had to come down and says, he says, behold, these people are one. And, and so, and now they've begun to build and nothing they proposed or imagined to do will be withheld from them. And again, he wasn't denying that their, their, the imagination has power to do something, has, do, has power to do amazing things. Mm -hmm. So, and God himself had to step in and stop it because mm -hmm. he knew through their imagination, they still had power to do that. And so even though the enemy has discovered the power of imagination, that does not mean it belongs to him. Mm -hmm. It belongs to the people of God. And so the, the problem is that he's gone to one direction and says, you know, the imagination, that is, that's my tool. You got to be careful <clears throat> with it because that's the enemy's tool. That's going, the enemy's camp and using his weapons. Mm -hmm. And, and so, mm -hmm. and not only mm -hmm. that, but then he said to Christians that you can't use this. And so, and I was thinking about this the other day, it, it's like, People that have that are religious, and we're talking about the memory and the imagination, they're gonna go those two directions. Number one, 
they have a memory that is uh, that they can't get over a memory, a hurt, a disappointment they can't get over and and it, it traps them. But number two is the other direction mm -hmm. is they have a, a built in limitation of how good God is mm -hmm. without scripture to back it up. Sure. Mm. And their, their, their imagination is, is going to get to a certain place. It says, no, I can't imagine that ever happening. I can't imagine God ever doing that. Um, I can intellectually, I can acknowledge God can do that. My imagination won't go there, even mm. though the word of God might allow that, but my imagination, mm. I won't go there. And so because of mm. that, I, it won't happen. And that's mm. where religion will, I, I, people that, say that are religious and bound up that's that's where they're they're getting bound up at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what do you do to help um say okay i'm i would have to admit i'm there i you know i could see it in the word but i just can't ever imagine that happening like for example for some people i can't ever imagine revival actually hitting uh my city or my mm -hmm. husband uh actually being saved or that sickness actually, actually being really healed calm. things that we know from the word of god that god does god wants it it can be done um and he's done it and honest. if if but if we're honest we would have to say i i agree with it in the word but my imagination, I can't picture anything other than what is. Um, how, what would you, what kind of practical things can someone do to say, okay, and, and I don't want to stay there. I, I need to give God my imagination. What would you say that you would encourage us to do to train our lives, our, our minds that way? You're right. It, it is, it is tough. Um, again, it's, it's that, that memory part of it where, um, this is all I've ever seen. I can't see anything different. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of goes back to the example where, um, like with, with Samson there, is that what the enemy did by putting out his eyes was probably the best thing for Samson at that point. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, all he could do was the internal um, life. Inter mm -hmm. Internal vision. <laughs> yep. And all I could do is was, was see on the inside. And there comes a point where you just have to, you just have to shut your eyes. Mm -hmm. You have to shut your eyes and my, everything I see does not agree with what the word of God says. So I, I need to walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. And so I need to, I need to be, I need to just shut my eyes and just start imagining one thing, one mm -hmm. possibly, can you imagine one thing start to change mm -hmm. and just, uh, and just say, God, I need and invite again. This, is, this is not a solo <laughs> thing. This mm -hmm. is something where God is working with you, both the will and to do of his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so you're again, like you said, you're willing. I'm willing to have my imagination expanded. I'm willing. God, help my just like people said to Jesus, help my unbelief, mm -hmm. help my imagination. I can't see this thing ever happening. This is, you know, my son keeps falling into the fire. Help my unbelief, he said. You know, this mm -hmm. is this is all I've ever known. Um, you know, I, I hear is I can't, I can't, I can't help my unbelief. And so, uh, you just have to shut your eyes and say, God, help me. Give me a picture. Give me a picture. Give me a picture. Give me like, mm -hmm. like, a um, talk to like God spoke to, um, Abraham and it says, what are you going to give me? Now mm -hmm. I, I don't have a child. You know, what are you, what are you going to do for me here? You know, you're, you, you're, you're the one that's uh, El Shaddai. You're the one that's the provider. Um, but yet, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. you've, you've called me the father of any nation, many nations, but what, what do I have? And he says, look up. Right. Look at the stars. Yes. Absolutely. Look at the, look at the sand. He says, give me a picture. Give me a picture. Give me a picture that, that relates to me. Mm -hmm. Give me a, something that, that, a word that, that will en encapture my imagination. Yeah. And that will be like your North star. And so you, you just have to, uh, again, uh, in getting specific, don't discount, you know, saying, Oh, I see this in the word of God. I see this in the word of God. Um, I, I would not just know it intellectually, I'd actually start imagining it. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. one of the guys mm -hmm. I'd follow on Facebook, his name's, uh, Roger Sapp. Good guy. Um, he, he got turned on to healing because he started 
going through the New Testament and he started highlighting every single, uh, well, he, all he would do for, uh, I don't know, six months or something, all he would do was read the miracles of Jesus. The healing, that's all, he would, do. That's all mm-hmm. he would do. And he says, after, after that point, um, praying for the sick became very easy Sure, mm-hmm. because that's that. all he could see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if your eye is single, Mm. your body will be full of light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you, you just need to get, shut your eyes and say, all right, I need to focus on one thing. Right. Yeah. And, and ask God to give you a picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that's kind of neat because you ask God to give you a picture and the word can be part of, uh, obviously a big part of sourcing mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah. I think also, you know, if the, like you said, the eye is single. And mm-hmm. so we need to be conscious of maybe the things that detract or take away mm-hmm. from um, godly imaginations yep. of, you know, that, um, you know, sure, do I, I mean, really want to watch that or, you know, or or listen to that or, or be a part of that? Um, to, and, and that's and not just like that in my imagination because I mean, it's going against. Obviously, you know, that could be like sinful stuff, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's just occupying your, your mind and your imagination with, you know, I've got a hobby of fishing. I mean, I could spend all, there's so many YouTube videos on fishing. I could spend the rest of my life watching, Mm -hmm. you know, binge watching fishing. Well, after a while, that would be all I could imagine <laughs> right. um, because that's what I'm feeding myself. Mm-hmm. And so it goes back to what you've said previously mm-hmm. is, you know, we feed our, our we filter our memories and we feed our imaginations from the word of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so, so you got to flush it out. You got to yeah. flush it out. It's, it <clears throat> has to become the biggest part of you. Um, uh, you know, Talk, talk about again the memory and the imagination. They work, work mm-hmm. so well Tandem. together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Kenneth Hagen, uh, <laughs> he he had a, um, a technique where he would before he would pray for anyone, um, even though he he knew faith, he he you know he could pray for anyone. The thing what he would do when he would go to a hospital, even though he knew he, whether they were again what state they were in, he would always open up the scripture. He'd read a. Uh, a story about Jesus healing someone and uh, and he he just make that story come to life and then he would pray. Mm-hmm. Why would he do that? Mm-hmm. Well, he was doing probably two things. Number one, getting his imagination uh, bigger mm-hmm. and in the lines of healing as long as the person that's that's uh, um, uh, that's listening, whether you know how much faith they had to start with or what, how much they were mm-hmm. involved in healing themselves, who knows but he knew, um, that feeding your faith with uh, in line with your imagination is super important. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you got to give a picture. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Faith comes by, you know, hearing yeah. the word of God and, and it's not just about hearing words. Mm-hmm. It's the word of God is living. It's life. Mm-hmm. It's action. It's bring the word to life. Mm-hmm. It's not just syllables. Mm-hmm. It's concepts and bring those to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's mm-hmm. so good. You know, uh, one of the stories that just comes to mind is the 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 uh, three servants that were entrusted with talents. One and two of them um, multiplied the talent, sure. but the one could only imagine how harsh cruel and cruel, and, harsh and, and so was. had sure. no vision for using his talent, no imagination mm-hmm. whatsoever. Just bury the thing, stick it in the ground. Um, and so, you know, you can just kind of see like practically, personally, in terms of ministry, in terms of business, um, you know, it's part of being a kingdom agent is being able to have vision for expansion and growth and multiplying, mm-hmm. you know, be mm-hmm. fruitful, multiply, you know, I mean, can you imagine it, it's just, <laughs> you know, you see the whole earth go and subdue it. Well, well, that means you're going to have to have a different vision. And it's kind of interesting is that 
that vision must have started with God in the garden. It's like, okay, you see your surroundings now. It's a garden. It's not a jungle. It's a garden that God, God mm-hmm. now go subdue the whole earth. So mm-hmm. I, it's almost like that garden with God in the word and that prayer time and that relationship becomes the fuel mm-hmm. for a whole of envisioning how different our families could be, how mm-hmm. different our cities, how different the church can be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, you just see it all yeah. coming together there. Yeah. You know, and I think a key thing too, is you're talking about that, when you say go subdue, it's like recognize your authority, your authority <laughs> over your memories, your authority over the, your imagination, yeah. that um, you, you you aren't just a helpless victim of whatever the devil throws at you. So true. Um, yeah. You, you filter, you, you have so much say in it, so much control. So it's like all those little little pins are coming together: <laughs> the mind, uh, the will, the emotion, the memories, the imagination. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the um, thing that comes to my mind here is, and I, I said this in in the uh, book, uh, you know, in terms of imagination with with God, is that um, <laughs> your as if, it's, if I say this right. It says your imagination of God changes the experiences you have with God. Yes, mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's an important thing to understand because uh, it doesn't change who God is. No. no. Mm-hmm. But it changes how you welcome him to experience everything sure. he's intended to be in your life. If mm-hmm. your I- imagination doesn't make a path uh, of faith for him to come into your life that way, You'll ne- he will always be that way, but you'll never experience it. You never experience it. Right. right. And Jesus, Jesus said as much, right? You know, I mean, to the to the guy who buried his talents, you know, Jesus said, okay, then I'll, if if you can only imagine God being harsh and unreasonable, I'll judge you by the very words. I'm going to interact with you the same way you said, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting you're saying that. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was going to bring that up because, um, yeah, John Evans has a great book called Rich God, Poor God, based off the... But his, but his, uh, the concept was the same, uh, was on that parable. He, he says the, the first two people, they, uh, they had a concept of God, that God was a multiplying God. Yes. God, you know, believed in uh, growth and multiplication and and uh, he and stewardship that God gave you something in order to increase it. That's a leverage to get to to become more, to be more and to, you'd honor your master. He would reward you if you if you use what you got to get more. Mm-hmm. That was that was their concept. And then you had the converse with the one that buried and, and says, like you said, and like the word of God says is that. Yeah, he, he says, I knew you as a harsh master. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I buried my talent. I'll, I'll keep it, but you'll get back. And he says, well, because you saw me that way, that's how you're going to be judged. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's so many things that, and this, this, is, this is the thing I think where, um, I think when we get to heaven, we'll, we'll experience the tears of regret because we'll see all the facets of who God is, mm-hmm. all the ways um, that we could welcome God to move through our lives, but our imaginations never prepared the way. Wow. Like before Jesus came, John the Baptist, um, he, he was sent the one to prepare the way. Our imagination is like that John the Baptist, to prepare the way for the kingdom of God. And there's so many things that God wants to say, I want to come to you this way, this way, this way, this way. It, it, isn't it been said like it's almost a parable it says everyone that prays for revival always fights it when it comes mm. and mm. the reason is because their imagination never opens up to see all the ways that they they are praying for something a concept that they do, that their imagination re- never reaches out to grab mm. mm-hmm. and so other people reap the fruits of it who whose imagination can grab Go it there. But the other mm-hmm. people that that prayed for it that wanted it but never could envision it. And they're mm-hmm. the ones that rejected it, which mm-hmm. is, which is unfortunate. And that's, yeah. that's, that's a puzzle, but there's, yeah. Our imagination is a thing that prepares the way of the Lord mm-hmm. for God to come in mm-hmm. all the ways he wants to come. And we yeah. have to, we have to do it. We have to see him in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, right. 
That's so good. Yeah. Brother, we yeah. really appreciate you spending this time with us. This has been very, very encouraging. And, um, and for those that may not be familiar, um, you have some resources that people could uh, take advantage of. I think you've to got an online more. school mm -hmm. and some uh, a lot of books. Why don't you just mention those so uh, people can follow up with you? Yeah, uh, website is spiritlifetraining.com. Um, that's, that's, uh, where you can find a lot of the, a lot of resources, audios and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, got a number of books, um, you know, known for spirit life training. Ta -da. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would have held, I would have, yeah, I would have held mine up, but our sweet little doggy. <laughs> She, she got a hold of it she, one she night sh when we were gone. Shredded the cover. She shredded the cover. The inside's still great. Yeah. <laughs> but it's well loved. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Your dog's going through the training. Yeah. <laughs> Does that encourage you? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well. And, and so you got the faith in the twin force of patience. Um, yeah. So this this one really tells about how patience and um, faith work together. Patience is actually mis translated in the bible is actually there's actually two very powerful words for mm -hmm. patience and which is good um one of my newest books the process of truth this is this book here is um i think one of the ones i'm most proud of because it it really goes through how to work out a, a truth into from reception to impartation mm -hmm. so it's 12 gotcha. steps there and again that 12 step process the de deal it's just the way it <laughs> yeah. yeah but um but there's 12 steps of how to how to cause a truth to, to come into to manifestation and mm -hmm. to be able to impart into a uh into a, a region mm -hmm. uh it's a powerful book um and then we have two supplements to spare life training the um uh, spiritual dimensions, spiritual breakthrough, and dimensions of mentality breakthrough. They go a little bit further into um, spiritual as well as uh, the the mentality part of the soul. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of expand on some of the concepts. Um, the school is spiritlifetrainingschool.com. Okay. Um, you can also reach it from spiritlifetraining.com. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. very cool. Mm -hmm. Lots of good resources. Um, yes. You've been a, a guest now a couple times on and we'll ha have to have you on again because yeah. uh, Tim is, is deep wells. Yes. Um, I know that you're um, uh, you have a full-time job, you're bivocational in ministry, but uh, from time to time you're available f uh, with enough lead time, at least uh, if the spirit leads for conferences as well um, and uh, special speaking. So uh, that's and he's just an all around great guy. We yeah. we actually lived in the same city for a number of years. We we're uh, church members together, and and Tim is just a genuine deal. His family is um, his, and his uh, wife and kids are uh, just Jesus lovers. And so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, real deal here. So I encourage people to connect with him as as yeah. much as they can. Thanks, Thanks so, so much, Tim. Tim. Thank you yeah. guys. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Love you guys. Well, brothers and sisters, it, you know, it is so good just to um, have this time to reflect about how God uses the imagination. And, you know, one of the things that is neat to me is how just in our very makeup, we bear the image of God. And right. although physically we are located in one time and space, mm -hmm. that through the power of our memory, we can actually relive and touch places in the past and by the power of our imagination, we can actually reach out into the future. The issue is, are you going into the past with God mm -hmm. and into the future with, with God, God mm -hmm. so that you're aligning your imagination with his mm -hmm. reality mm -hmm. and you're, uh, you're aligning your memories mm -hmm. with his reality? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because the truth is you can touch all of those places yeah. and uh, you're going to. Uh, the issue is just mm -hmm. letting, uh, letting your heart and your soul be programmed with the word of God and through a spirit of faith and, and humility as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. You know, as we we're talking about imagination too, I was remembering about uh, Mr. Rogers, mm. Mr. Rogers neighborhood. And I watched it as a child and my children watched it, watched the reruns. And, um, uh, um, he was always so calm and gentle. We referred to him <laughs> on another podcast I know, but we, um, 
Uh, he talked about just the last <laughs> podcast. I, know, I, I was mentioning Mr. Yeah, Rogers, so yeah. y'all gonna think we're all about Mr. Rogers over here. Yeah, <laughs> but we love Mr. Rogers. We appreciate him. But what I was gonna say wait is, till you raise kids, guys. Yeah, you'll love Mr. Rogers. And um, but one of the things, um, a big portion of his show is um, what make believe. Yeah. Let's go to make believe land, and they take the little trolley ding, 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 yep. and and go into make believe, and and he does the puppets with oh, yeah. you know Prince Tuesday and King Friday mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and Daniel Tiger and all that, and um, um, and Mister Rogers knew children use their imaginations, and mm-hmm. he used that little playing it out with the puppets in the imagination of maybe this is like, you know, maybe a child is, uh, is anxious about going to school or something right. and just like Prince Tuesday or, was anxious about going to school. And so, or the one that was afraid to go down the bathtub drain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one really helped us <laughs> yeah. with one of our kids. But, um, yeah. And so, you know, but they, they through the imagination and the creativity of the puppets, they pretend it out. They mm-hmm. make believe. Well, what would it be like if we if it played out this way or if it worked out this way? Mm-hmm. But what that did, um, and what that allows children to do, uh, as we're training children, is it allows them to kind of prepare mm-hmm. emotionally and mentally for different situations that they'll face. And I don't think adults are any different. No. It, it really helps us to go to make believe land sometimes. Yeah. Um, and uh, we don't necessarily have to have a puppet or you know like Mr. Rogers, but it's the same kind of value. I actually mm-hmm. had uh, have uh, something that I call training prayer, mm-hmm. uh, and. And honestly, it comes, it it was part of my life to help me overcome a fear of speaking to people, Mm. uh, to help me be able to minister to strangers. Have uh, some confidence going into it if you've already imagined it. And so, you know, uh, having, Mm -hmm. having, you know, faced the opportunities to speak to people and chickened out, you know, like, Mm. what do I say? I would I had to actually um, overcome all of that in my in private, but I did it through imagining the scenario and then prayerfully, you know, Father, I thank you that Mm. you're with me right here, right now. Even as I see this person in their shopping cart and it looks like they have a hurt leg, I thank you, Jesus, that you have authorized me to represent you and that I go to them and I speak to them and I I smile. I'm not nervous. I'm not right. afraid because your love fills my heart for these people. Uh, and, and I would just pray my way through the entire scenario, mm-hmm. uh, you know, speaking to their leg to be healed and telling them to test it and it, believing, believing that, that the that power of God, God is working mm-hmm. through what and I say and what and I do. Um, you know, and there's so much of that. Um Oftentimes, uh, we have stories that we're repeating in our yes. mind, and sometimes people get caught in negative, in negative loops. Imagine, mm-hmm. They are they're imagining, imagining the worst. You know, here I am. You know, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna is, go home, and here we go okay, again. Yeah, this and, is bound to happen. Yeah, and uh, and oftentimes, without realizing it, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Uh, mm. Because you know, maybe you can't change what someone else is going to do. Um, but your reaction towards that and just uh, you've not imagined responding differently. But you can train yourself what, by using your imagination. What would happen if mm-hmm. your insensitive spouse mouthed off at you? Can you imagine yourself doing something besides getting hurt, offended? And yelling uh, back. And yet, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you imagine what would happen? <clears throat> Uh, you know, and let the Holy Spirit feed that imagination. Sure. Uh, let your the Holy Spirit feed your imagination about uh, envisioning a Jesus living in your skin. How would Jesus uh, respond in various cir- circumstances? Um, this is where it gets to be fun because mm-hmm. we we feed our our souls through the Word. Yeah. Uh, but then by faith, we allow the Holy Spirit to give us a picture of who Jesus is that's f- informed through the Word, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, how does Jesus live through us? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just so amazing and, and yeah. really appreciated all the things that Tim said. And yeah. and hope, brothers and sisters, that you'll, you'll take this to heart. Mm-hmm. Um, It'll help you. <laughs> now, one of the things I'll just say, 
This has a huge implication in being able to experience God, mm-hmm. meaning uh, there's a part of you in your spirit, and it and it isn't necessarily your imagination, but literally through your spirit, you can access God outside of time and space. Your spirit is just not bound. No, you can. You know, in, in one eternal, with the eternal Father. Eternal mm-hmm. life is outside of time and outside yeah. of space. And the more it seems like you're able to um, let the let uh, your imagination become a tool of the Spirit, that some of the things that God wants to show you and make real to you Unlock. will require you being mm-hmm. unlocked in your imagination. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll give you an example. One example, okay? Just one. <laughs> because I know we're running out of time here, but just one example, okay? I've, I am in the marketplace, and I've got a huge meeting where uh, I think there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 companies where there's presidents, owners, vice presidents, and I am, for the first time, giving this entire presentation all by myself. Mm. The, the originators of this program that I'm leading uh, have retired or moved. Uh, one of them moved on to another program. Passed and, the baton. And on the baton the... has been passed, right? <laughs> and uh, and uh, everybody's counting on me to do a great job. And here I am. It's that morning, and you know, just like most people, you get a little bit of jitters, mm-hmm. um, and you're Normal. tempted. You're tempted to sort of give in to fear of man or that kind of thing. And you know what I did? What I did? went to be with God tomorrow. In your yeah. Me- meaning, in the future, meaning, I just did this. I just said, Father, I thank you that you are not bound by time and space, mm-hmm. and you are already on the other side of this entire program, and that you love me still. Mm-hmm. And I let God love me on the other That's side fun. of this program, and I just succeed or just fail. Opened mm-hmm. up my heart, and I wasn't trying to picture anything. Mm-hmm. I was just letting go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it doesn't and feel imagining what's important, like yeah. whether you succeed or fail, I'm loved. Yeah. That's all that matters. <laughs> and to be honest with you, it didn't feel to me like I was using my imagination as much as I was, uh, using my faith, mm-hmm. but imagination is part of it. It's just not the leading part. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, it, it's, it, it's the same way as your intellect is part, part of, of it. it. It's just not the, the leading, leading part, part. Your, emotions. your emotions, right? Mm-hmm. It's your spirit. It's accessing the presence of God by mm-hmm. faith. faith and faith, you learn faith. to let faith integrate your your soul mm-hmm. no, everything and every because part. like we talked about it's not compartmentalized it's easier to understand or to train piece by piece but yeah. it all comes together every part well mm-hmm. brothers and sisters we thank you so much for joining us uh, we're blessed that you uh, would tune in to us we release a new podcast every Friday at noon uh, if you haven't already, uh, check out the Sons and Daughters uh, podcast group on Facebook. Uh, be part of the discussion there. And we have additional resources, including these awesome Death, Death Before Death Disobedience t shirts at fullspeedimpact.com. You can order them. Uh, They're only available for the next two weeks. So be sure to get yours uh, now. At, yeah, as soon <laughs> as you can. Uh, and they will be shipped out to you as soon as the fundraiser is over. Um, and uh, and hopefully we'll have enough interest that we'll have the money in hand that we can go forward and With develop the app. this app. Mm-hmm. So, hey, brothers and sisters, tool. yeah, God bless you. And uh, in the meanwhile, you walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ and impact the world around you.